Warning, this content may be disturbing to some audiences. Subscribe. If you dare. He told me he's madly in love with his fiancé's best friend and he couldn't back out now. Hey everybody, welcome to, an Ectost. People ask Reddit. Uber drivers, what's the deepest secrets you've overheard in your car? Number 1. I picked up this young overly affectionate couple that spent the entire trip making out in my backseat and telling each other that they loved each other. Cute. So I drop off the couple and head on my way to pick up my text fare. I hear a cell phone ring in my backseat, realize it's my previous rides, and pick up the phone to let them know I have it, and I'll come back to drop it off. Turns out it was the guy's wife phoning to check in on him while he was on a business trip, which he was thoroughly enjoying with his mistress. Number 2. Picked up a girl mid-Saturday. She was a bit upset and a little teary and opened up to me. Turned out a business she had started was failing and she was in debt, and had turned to stripping on the side to cover the bills. She said the pay was good but she kept getting really sick from all the booze she felt obliged to drink, part of her job was making guys spend money at the bar. She hated it and felt trapped and kept asking me what I would do in her situation. I'm a guy, so kind of hard for me to answer. Tried to give her the best advice I could think of, like getting the tax office to withhold tax for a while, but couldn't really help. Only thing I could do was end the trip early. Number 3. Once I had an extremely drunk middle-aged couple fight for an entire 30-minute ride. They attempted to bring me into their fight many times. I just pretended like I was deaf and didn't answer when they tried to rope me into it. Number 4. Once I had two girls and a guy declare their love for each other as friends and saying they should hang out more often when they got in the car and by the time I dropped them off they hated each other and never wanted to speak again. My tongue was bleeding by the end of the ride from trying not to laugh my ass off. I cracked a few smiles, I wonder if they ever noticed. They were fighting over the new football coach at the local uni. Number 5. Picked up this girl and her brother, they have been out celebrating her birthday. Brother is completely wasted and she is sober. He gets in the back of my car, passes out and she sits in the front. The ride starts and we make small talk. Apparently, her brother and her boyfriend had taken her out for her birthday but her boyfriend got mad at her and went somewhere else and brother decided to get shit-faced immediately so she had to take care of him. It ended up being a shitty birthday. On top of that, she told me her boyfriend was verbally abusive and made her feel really shitty all of the time. I basically said stuff along the lines of you need to watch out for your own happiness and your so should be making you happy, otherwise I don't see the point in having a so. She started crying buckets and told me how her entire life, she never realized that. She always just assumed that boyfriends slash husbands have the right of way as she put it and that she never even considered that she should be happy in a relationship. Maybe that stuck with her and she's moving on to better and happier things. I'd like to think so. That ride ended with me helping her drag her brother out of my car and up the steps to the house. Number 6. Former Uber driver here. Picked a girl up a sweet girl from a bar on a Wednesday night, absolutely hammered, about 10 p.m. She got into my car, apologized for being so drunk and politely asked if we could just drive around a little while, with the windows down. I was prepping for a cleaning fee, trying to drive and pull a vomit bag out of the glove box, but no, she just did that airplane thing with one hand out the backseat window. She asked me if I had ever thought about dying, to which I replied, yeah, I guess so. That's when she told me that she had cancer. It was in her brain and it was too far gone to consider chemo. I remember my heart just pounding. She told me she was dying and she was going to be okay. Tonight she was celebrating with her work friends who threw her a going away party. She told them she was taking a position abroad. I just didn't tell them that abroad was heaven. Jesus. Effing. Christ. I turned off my app and cried my ass all the way home. Number 7. I picked up a guy in a suit at around 6 p.m. on Tuesday near Venice, California. He told me to take him downtown and per usual I asked if he had a preferred route and he said, no whatever is quickest. We get going and the usual banter begins. So how long have you been driving for Uber? Me? One year or so, it's a great job, he says. Oh, cool, where do you stay? I answer. In the valley. And he says. Oh nice, nice. So, how long have you been driving for Uber? I paused and kind of half smiled, thinking he was effing with me. He wasn't. So I answered verbatim. One year or so it's a great job. He goes, oh cool, where do you stay at? This repeated three more times before I finally answered it differently, saying I just started, it's not for me. 
And him again replying, oh cool, where do you stay at? I answered one last time the original way, but then finally, silence. By this point I was on the 10 highway, stuck in rush hour traffic. I look in my rear view and he is rubbing his head and hair profusely, like someone going through withdrawals. He took his suit jacket off and looked severely uncomfortable. I dialed 911 on my phone in case shit went down. He then out of nowhere yells in a deeper voice than earlier, F. And I said I'm sir is everything alright? And he goes, where are we? I said, I'm on the 10 headed downtown, is that still okay? He goes, yes. At this point by the graces of the universe, we ended up moving pretty quickly through traffic. Then, right before we exit off the 10, two miles or so from his apartment, he yelled again where are we? Comma. I said, sir, we're almost to your house, is that still okay? And he goes, yes that's fine. Once we arrive, I pull up to drop him off and he gathers his stuff, opens the door and looks back in at me before walking away and in the most genuine, kind way says, have a great night. Watch out for crazy people. Honestly one of the strangest, creepiest events ever. Subsequently, I bought a stun gun slash taser and luckily so, as this was just the beginning of several crazy incidents. So damn glad I don't drive anymore. Number 8. I picked up a guy from a gay bar and he was noticeably coming on to me. He then confessed that he was one of the founders of a very popular gaming company and offered me $2,000 to come up to his room. He also refused to leave my car unless I kissed his hand. Fun times. Number 9. Took this 19-year-old kid and what I assumed was his girlfriend back to her house on Pride Weekend in San Francisco. They made out the whole ride. When I dropped them off, only she got out. He said take me to Castro in 18th. I said really? And he said yeah, I only make out with girls when I'm rolling. Never a dull moment in San Francisco. Number 10. One time I had a group of three guys, probably around my age, mid-twenties. They seemed nervous, avoided eye contact, and were pretty much silent from the moment they hopped in. I tried confirming the destination, asked how their night was going, etc., but only got muffled mumbling in return. As always, I worked the situation out in my head in a calm, rational manner. Something like, are these guys trying to rob me? Jack my car? Did they just kill somebody? Am I an accessory to murder? Do they have knowledge of the impending apocalypse? But as my paranoia routine winded down, I slowly started to realize what was going on. Between the beads of sweat, occasional jaw clenching, and finally, random giggle outbursts. These kids were tripping effing balls. Once it hit me I called them out immediately and told them I was cool. They looked so relieved. I started blasting music, some Humphreys McGee I do believe, and they just started geeking out by that point. Fun ride. At the end of the ride, the guy that sat up front tossed me a bag of shrooms. Good times. Number 11. Driving around waiting for pings, get one at a popular bar. Pull up and a young woman flags me down, gives me her name, asks for mine, I'm her ride. Easy enough. There's a guy with her, they're both quite drunk. She says goodnight to him and gets in the rear passenger side door. Homeboy isn't having it, decides he's coming with. Starts trying to convince her, despite her saying she has work early, wants to get to sleep, but he's not taking no for an answer. It's getting a bit weird as he's getting more and more pushy slash aggressive about it, to the point that she's clearly uncomfortable. I step out of the car, and say over the top of the car hey man, if she says you're not getting at the car, you're not getting in the car. He looks over at me with hate in his eyes. I'm a bit tense, not knowing this kid's deal. He slams the door, walks away, talking shit as he goes, really? Talking shit as you walk away? What a hard ass. Get back in the car, girl seems a little more sober after the experience, and is shaken up over it. Take her back home, make sure she gets in safe. Not as scary or as weird as it could have been, but the dude gave off a bad vibe, and I'm glad he took the hint and f off. Number 12. Two 40-something guys who I picked up from a bar were talking on a phone speaker, and they were trying to make plans with a third guy who was at a party with a bunch of drunk 12 graders, exact words. One guy in my car asked if there was anyone younger there, another dude said dude really? Followed by silence, then he said effing sweet. Not sure as there was missing context but it sounded like there were younger teenagers there already drunk and these older dudes were going to pick up. Number 13. One time I was driving a dude for a bit of a long trip. Was gonna take around 25 to 30 minutes. He wasn't hammered, but definitely a bit drunk. It was late and he must have been feeling a bit down, 
so he confided in me and asked me for some advice. He told me he's madly in love with his fiance's best friend and he couldn't back out now. He'd been with this girl for years, and engaged for one, ready to be married in a few months. It was pretty sad to hear, because it wasn't just your average story. It was filled with a lot of subtle emotional and mental anguish. The guy went through about five years of ups and downs with his girl, and found an innocent friend and comfort in the best friend. After a few years, he developed feelings and it was just downhill from there. Felt bad for the guy because he seemed like he was truly in love with his fiancé too, although he had strong feelings for this friend. He knew that going through with the marriage meant a lifetime of being around the friend and suppressing feelings, but also breaking it off meant that he lost the girl of his dreams. Seemed like a genuinely nice guy, I hope he's doing okay. Number 14. Drove Uber one night. It was pretty tame until I picked up two guys who wanted to go to a strip club 40 miles away. As they requested an Uber select fare I was happy to drive that far. $80 to 100, it took them 15 minutes to get ready and into the car and they seemed cool so I wasn't worried. As soon as we got on the freeway the guy in the passenger seat started asking about Uber driving and things got dark. After a few minutes he started saying shit like what would you do if someone just grabbed the steering wheel and ran the car into the median, and have you ever thought about what would happen if someone in the back seat tried to strangle you while you were driving. I got a little freaked out and tried to lighten the mood by asking what they were celebrating etc, but the one guy just kept at it. I was happy to get to the strip club and get them the hell out of the car. Bonus the bouncer at the club gave me $40 for dropping them off there. Make sure to share your personal story in the comments below and have the opportunity to be featured in a future video. Also, if you like these topics don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button to continue seeing more content like this every day. See you next time.